Hello, hello. <laughs> so how is everyone doing? It took quite a while to go live. We are in a new location and let's just say cords, laptop, internet, everything combined has been just a new learning curve. And we've been working on it for the last couple of days, but now once we were about to go live, it became like a whole, a whole new world, but literally became a whole new world. <laughs> and so I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you so much for waiting. Um, there is a lot to digest today, a lot to digest today. And it's pretty interesting to be in a new location. It's honestly also kind of great to be in a new location because I have been doing all of these streams out of my home and with two kids, a toddler and a newborn, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's a lot, it's a lot. But how is everyone doing? Thank you so much for waiting. There's so much to go into and I had to restart my safari and so things were lost and then I'm having to regain them. And so just bear with me today. Really, really bear with me today. But we're going into Matt Underwood today. We're going into Matt Underwood and we're going into Dan Schneider, which, you know, for me personally, I, I, I don't like having to go back in time. I, I personally don't enjoy going back to the past, but I never really had the opportunity to, you know, write a book and be able to go through everything in kind of one sitting, one setting, and just kind of release it. So, and I don't know, as a survivor, which I'm sure a lot of survivors out there know, is things come up at random that you remember, that you haven't thought about for a while, and it comes up and then you're like, oh, I wanna release this. And so for me, like I hate, I don't really love having to go back to the Zoe 101 days, but at the same time, as a survivor of, you know, many different predators and the industry itself, I think it's important to at least I don't know, share with the world what I have personally gone through because most people, you know, know me from Nicole from Zoe 101 and watched the show almost religiously as a child and saw really the edited and cut and pristine version of what was actually taking place. I mean, at least for me personally. And it's been quite a journey for me coming forward about, you know, everything I've experienced, what I went through, what certain individuals has done have done to me. And it's a it's a lifelong journey healing. It it, it really is. And, you know, I didn't know that I received an email from someone who got an email allegedly from Matt Underwood where he writes in like 45 paragraphs, 45 paragraphs about his defense for Dan Schneider, his defense for, I mean, honestly, Nickelodeon, and not even just his defense, but he he goes into great detail about Sloan, dissing Sloan, and I, and it just it's the most ridiculous email I've ever read, honestly. And obviously, I don't know for certain that it's Matt Underwood, but I'm like ninety nine percent positive it is Matt Underwood. Comes from his Gmail, and it's just very hurtful because. I dealt with extreme, extreme bullying on the set of Zoe 101. And people like to like laugh maybe about bullying and kind of laugh it off, especially when it was so many years ago. But 
the more I'm learning and after reading Britney Spears' book, I got way more inspired to not feel so much shame about admitting that these things still hurt me. And when I came forward about the bullying on the set of Zoe 101, which was in 2019, in regards to the reboot that was going to happen and Dan Schneider went to the dinner and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, it was hard to do because I know that a lot of people out there are going to say, wow, you know, you're not over this yet. Or, wow, are you trying to... Uh, get attention? Are you seeking attention? And I already knew what the what the backlash was going to be for me personally coming forward about everything. But you must remember for so many years I really did not speak out about it. You know, I, I it was something that was something I kept inside or I kept when I was speaking with my friends about what had happened on the set of Zoe 101, and I didn't really want to make it public. But that reboot, that reboot, a malicious intent, welcome to the munchies. Thank you so much for joining. Um, you know, once the reboot happened, and you have to remember, I was always left out. I was always left out on the set of Zoe 101 by the cast members. And there were a few cast members that tried here and there to make me feel less sad, which for one of them being Sean Flynn, sometimes here and there Chris Massey, but for the most part, it was very little effort, very little effort on their part. It was just that I had my own friendships with these individuals right like I would be able to speak to them I mean this is what's so ridiculous to say like I was able to speak to them and they treated me with respect that wasn't the case for a lot of the other cast members that just wasn't the case and so the effort that Sean Flynn put into making me feel welcomed which just was just like normal effort was just being a human being being kind, wanting to make sure, you know, that I was seen as a human being. And I and, and on Zoe 101, I really did not feel seen ever. Very, very rarely did I feel seen. I felt like I was constantly having to swallow a lot of my feelings. And so for those out there that have been bullied at, in high school, in middle school, in elementary school, you know, I see you and I feel you and I hear you. And, you know, as a child, we're just wanting to be seen as a person. And we just want people to, at the very least, respect us. And at the very least, not be mean to us and, and, and not make fun of us, right? And so, yeah, it still bothers me. Yeah, the bullying on Zoe 101 to this day, it still bothers me. It still hurts. I still have wounds when it comes to my time there. And it wasn't even just about the children on set, but it was about how the adults allowed that type of behavior day in and day out without trying to mediate it, without trying to make it better. If anything, I was just told over and over again to, to bite my tongue, whatever the saying is, you know, swallow my feelings because I was not Zoe. I was not the lead. I was not the lead on that show. And in Within industry standards, you, especially back then, you had to be careful about being seen as problematic because you might lose your job if you're problematic. And what's so sad is within the industry is problematic is just feeling feelings, being hurt, 
feeling sad, maybe feeling angry one day. That was seen as problematic and could cost you your job. And I honestly don't think that 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 the industry, the Hollywood entertainment industry is the only place where we teach this to children. I think children are taught to swallow their feelings in multiple different institutions, like school. And after I came forward in 2019 about what I experienced on the set of Zoe 101, I got a flood of DMs and emails, et cetera, from so many individuals who had been bullied at school, in, in, in their homes, et cetera, and how they could actually relate to what had happened to me in Hollywood, right? And I was actually very fearful of coming out about what happened to me within the Hollywood industry because of privilege. And is anyone going to relate to this? And are they going to see me as complaining? You know, I'm supposed to have it all. Like, at least I was on a show or, you know, whatever, whatever. The typical victim blaming. I was afraid of that. I was definitely fearful of that. But after receiving all of those DMs and emails, et cetera, from so many people out there that could relate to what happened to me, I felt less alone. And I really do believe that is one of the many positives about coming forward about your story and being vulnerable with the world and being vulnerable about your pain. And so here I am once again, you know, it's what, 2023? And, you know, I'm 31 years old and I am here talking about Matthew Underwood, who was on Zoe 101 when I was a kid. And once again, I'm talking about Dan Schneider. And these are people from my childhood. But I still think it's extremely important because I don't think pain ever really goes away. I don't think hurt really ever goes away. I think there's ways for us to transform our pain, to tr transform uh, our sufferings, but the memory is always there. And on some days I think I fully healed something and then another day emerges and I feel exactly like I was when I was 12 years old or 15 or 18 or whatever the age was, you know? and. I've had to learn to not be so hard on myself about the healing progress and that healing, you know, is not a destination. It's a process and we all deserve to accept that. Accept that it's not a final destination, you know, accept that some days we might wake up and the trauma is very visceral. It's very real again. It feels like it happened yesterday. And I don't think there's any shame in that. And I get bullied all the time, even on the internet, about things that I bring up. And the internet will be pretty cruel to me and say that I'm attention seeking or why I didn't get over something and why am I bringing this up now. And I want to be maybe an example for others out there to not feel so alone in being re-traumatized or getting triggered or having your trauma resurface and having maybe a new view on it, whatever the thing is, to have grace in that, for others to have compassion towards trauma survivors and, and, and not feel like every time you feel something from the past that you might want to bring up, that you don't feel scrutinized for that, that you don't feel unlovable. I think really it's about not feeling unlovable when you're re-traumatized and you're triggered. Hi, Mick. Thank you so much, Mick. I guess Matthew Underwood was better suited for the role of Logan Reese than Dan Schneider initially thought. Great on you for staying so strong, Alexa. Thank you so much, Mick. <laughs> yeah, and you know, these are the kids I dealt with and, okay, so I'm 31 and I'm still a little bit sad about it. Sure, 
if that's what you got on me, cool. You know, I'm a human. I still feel my past and, you know, I'm, I'm still on my healing journey. And if that's all you got on me, cool. You know, I'll take it. I'll take it because I know that I'm not alone and I know there's a lot of people out there that feel the same fucking way as I do. That don't feel like their pain was a long time ago. They feel like their pain was yesterday. They feel like their pain was a minute ago. Right? Doesn't just disappear. Newsflash, it doesn't just disappear. We still feel things from the past. And it also shapes us into who we are today. I know that a lot of my decision making comes from a lot of the pain that I felt in the past. Ways that I want to show up in the world because of what I experienced in the past. How I want to be a better human being because of things in the past. Right? The past is almost a lot of, there's guidance in the past. And I'm done with the victim blaming. I'm done with feeling shame about speaking up, period. I'm done with survivors having to feel this shame around feeling the pain that is very real to them. And if I have to be a dartboard for those people, then you know what? I'll be the dartboard. I'll be the dartboard because I think it's important also for my daughter and my son to know that their pain is not irrelevant no matter when it happened. And so... You know, that's where I'm personally at in my life. And I hope that I'm able to, I don't know, at least make people feel less alone. That's really been it. And I know I've been called an attention seeker about my past, but I do want to remind people that I would just tweet away or live my Instagram, <laughs> you know, about things that happened to me. I wasn't making a dime off of that. I didn't get really anything off of that. It was just to release the pain that I was feeling and finally regaining my voice. And I didn't gain anything off of that. I really, really did not. The only thing I got out of that was a lot of people maybe making fun of me a little bit around the world. Around the world. And it was still worth it. You know, I, I, I wouldn't take back a thing. I really wouldn't take back any of the ways in which... I have come forward about what happened to me. Marissa, thank you for letting us in on your healing journey. This is really helpful to so many. You are so real and human on here, and I'm always so impressed. Thank you so much, Marissa. I really appreciate you. And see, people like Marissa didn't exist really when I was 12 years old. <laughs> I didn't have, you know, this nice friend like Marissa who, you know, when I was at my most vulnerable, made me feel supported and safe. And that I wasn't a loser or that I wasn't being over dramatic, or, you know, whatever. I didn't have this growing up. And so, yeah. So I, I want to be that for other people, okay? I want other people to not feel so alone because I felt very alone for a very long time. And, okay. So that's me. <laughs> um, before going into my past with Matthew Underwood. Now, the reason... Why I wanted to go into Matt Underwood today was because I realized I missed an email from somebody. Now, this email was not sent to me. This email was sent to a fan of Zoe 101. A fan. And Matt Underwood, I guess, it's a back and forth through emails. And this individual, which I'm going to protect their identity, you know, sent it to me to let me know that this was what was going on and she wanted me to know that Matt Underwood was still talking poorly about me. Surprise! And it's so funny because Matt Underwood wasn't necessarily always actively bullying me, but he like allowed the bullying to happen and didn't do much about it. And, and he wasn't also necessarily like the nicest human being, I wouldn't say. But the fact that we're so many years later and he's sending an email where he's talking about me poorly uh says a lot oh oh shit all right we need to set we need to like stop the mic for one second because apparently i'm popping <laughs> apparently i'm popping off so one second am i popping
All right, I'm back. So apparently I'm popping off. <laughs> apparently I'm popping off in the new location, which is kind of fitting, honestly, because I kind of feel like I am in a new stage of maybe popping off a little bit. I, I have definitely been a people pleaser my whole life, and the industry has definitely taught me to be that way, and the industry has benefited off of me being a people pleaser, and I'm honestly done with that phase of my life. I mean, slowly. I'm having to learn how to not be a people pleaser, but I feel like I'm in a new phase in my life where I'm accepting that, you know, it's not healthy for me to constantly people please. And I'm having to, I'm having to learn that about myself. So yeah, so Matt Underwood allegedly sent this email. He goes into almost 45 paragraphs, you guys, uh, about Dan Schneider, about Zoe 101, about blah, blah, blah. And in my opinion, it looked like a lot of mansplaining to a female fan as if he knew better than her, when in my opinion, this fan was really on to something. This fan was not saying things that weren't necessarily true. She wasn't. She was, I guess, taking a deep dive into Dan Schneider, taking a deep dive into Nickelodeon, and as a star of Nickelodeon, whatever you want to call me, you know, uh, she wasn't wrong, per se. And you have to remember, Matt Underwood was not a female on a Dan Schneider show. And he really seemed to want to speak as though he was a female on the show. And so we're going to digest it. We're going to go through it. It's so long, but there are a lot of things that I think are important to comment on. I'm going to comment on Dan Schneider's um, feet tweets that seem to be galore. So many feet tweets. Why? We're going to go into some Zoe 101 clips that I found that were extremely inappropriate for children as we read along to Matt Underwood's novel-like email. So is everyone, is everyone ready to, to dive into this? First and foremost, I'm going to pull up my Safari. And at least just let everybody know. Adam, can you hear me? I'm going to pull it up. So this show is not sponsored by any brand. This show is, you know, very DIY. I am doing this alone with my husband and my very good friend, Adam, at the moment. And, you know, it's very DIY. And so we don't have any sponsors. And so I like to remind people the ways in which they can support the channel, the ways in which they can keep this sustainable. Because I don't even know if I'll be able to do it for much longer if it's not sustainable, sadly. So I've dedicated my whole life to this mission and I, I, I want to keep doing it. And so one of the ways to support the channel and the work that I am personally doing is the website, epredators.com. We have merch on there and that merch really, really helps make this all sustainable. Also, I really like to hear all the stories from people who have worn the merch and ended up having a conversation with a stranger about you know, the topics, survivors, predators, et cetera, um, which I just think is really powerful. It, it, it is a way to spread the word and also keep this all sustainable at the same time. And so I just want to show people a few things. Like here we have the Eat Predators t-shirt. I love this t-shirt dearly. My husband wears this t-shirt regularly. And so we got an Eat Predators t-shirt and the holidays are coming up. So maybe it would be a nice gift for an ally or a fellow survivor. Have tote bags as well that say Eat Predators on it. Um, let's see what else we have here in the store. Speaking of Zoe 101, I thought it was funny to make a remake of the PCA <laughs> t-shirts but instead it says eat predators academy on it and we only have a limited edition of this so i think it will only be available probably until january so 
that's on there as well. We have stickers. We have the Scientology t-shirt that goes towards the Aftermath Foundation, which helps Scientologists or ex-Scientologists get out of Scientology safely. We have the Power to Survivors tote, which is one of my favorites personally. And so, yeah, this is a really, really great way to support the channel. Also, moving on, we do have the Patreon, and the Patreon helps the activism and artivism part of ePredators, which are the protest signs you see behind me. We go once a month to an institution that has been allegedly covering up SA. We also go to different events that an alleged predator is at and protest them as well. And so it helps us survivors get onto the streets and organize properly. Also, the Patreon helps for the channel as well. So if you are like, I don't want to get any merch, but I do want to help make this more sustainable, the Patreon is just a great way to do both at the same time. So there's that. And obviously a member, um, Adam, can you make me full screen for one second? So, you know, for me, like, even you liking the video or sharing the video with others is so helpful. So even if you're not buying merch, obviously, and you're not a Patreon member, I do just want to say that you liking, you sharing, you being here means a lot. And I see you and I hear you and I deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate every single person. We do have the three membership tiers for YouTube and for the Chef's Kiss, it's the Britney Spears Book Club, which has been so healing and so wonderful. I am loving it. We just had our second week on Sunday and it's just been a very beautiful healing experience going through Britney Spears' book and, and being able to speak with one another about feelings that are coming up or perspectives that are coming up, et cetera. And so Chef's Kiss is for the Britney Spears Book Club. And moving on, there is also... The Hard Feelings Jeanette McCurdy podcast that we're going to be doing once we're done with the Britney Spears book. So I really hope to see everyone there. And thank you for thank you so much for being here. So moving on, who is Matt Underwood? Let's look, let's look at Matt Underwood. I'm going to can we pull him up really quickly? Let's. Let's take a look at Matt Underwood. So. Matt Underwood played Logan on Zoe 101. He also was arrested. Do we have him up? Okay, so um, Matt Underwood was arrested. Oh, thank you so much, Alexandra. You deserve better. I can relate. Thank you so much, Lilo the Stitch. I really appreciate you. And I'll try to read some of the super chats when we're done with all of this. So Matt Underwood arrested, W-E-E-D, and an underage girl, which I do want to go through this a little bit because I've just recently read about this and I'm a little bit like, uh. so let's see here. I guess he, according to WPBF25 in Florida, 22-year-old Underwood was in a bedroom with a 17-year-old girl in Port St. Lucie when cops arrived to the scene and discovered blank and blank paraphernalia. Underwood was arrested on possession of blank as well as contributing to the delinquency of a minor. So, okay. So that's, I guess that's where Matt Underwood was in, in 2012. And it's good to note this before going into this email because I don't think a person who has been in a position like this should necessarily be commenting on on Dan Schneider on behalf of all of the girls that had to experience, you know, Dan Schneider. So moving on, let's get into the email. So I guess he says here, howdy, sorry, I write novels. And boy, oh boy, does Matt Underwood write novels novels okay this is like 35 fucking paragraphs and you know I, I don't even know how someone goes through all this but we're gonna try to but it's honestly insanely long and so just to date this it was saturday march 20th 2021 
So this was before Dan Schneider was exposed. This was before my protests. This was before the Business Insider article that exposed Dan Schneider in on so many different levels. So just to note this, this is how this this is what a, this is kind of like. Ma Can you go full screen for one second? This is what. I think this is Matt Underwood's Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis moment, personally. So we all got to see what happened when Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis and many others wrote these very kind emails about their good old friend, convicted R-word, Danny Masterson, um, yada, yada, yada. This is Matthew Underwood's, in my opinion, when it comes to Dan Schneider. So, okay, let's go back to the email. Here we go. First off, sorry for the novel-like response. I have to be super clear with my statements so they don't come across as condescending or misunderstood. And you know what, Matt Underwood? It came off extremely condescending. And, you know, maybe, I don't think you were misunderstood. I think it was very clear where you stand. I can agree that TV and movies as a whole industry needs to lay off the desire to make kids seem sexy. I do, however, have a somewhat different perspective on Dan's and Nickelodeon's actions in that regard. I see them as being much lighter about it and actually providing more content with less S-E-X-U-A-L-I-Z-A-T-I-O-N than just about any other network and creator. Lighter. Lighter how? Lighter how, Matt? Lighter how? Like, as if that's some kind of positive thing, that it's lighter? What do you mean by that? Just curious. Um, okay, so where was I? Yes, the kids wore bikinis, but it's not exactly blank to do so and hasn't been for a while, unless a public interprets it as blank. I have a problem with society making bikinis blank, even though I do have differing, I do have differing opinions about that. Also, Adam, can we send, turn off the fan for one second? <laughs> I was like... I'm hearing, I feel like I'm a little bit in a, I'm a, like in a tornado. I feel like I'm in the Wizard of Oz a little bit. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, that was a crazy difference. Um, I, I personally do have a different opinion when it comes to what Matt Underwood is saying here. I really, really do. Because... You have to remember the context. You have to remember the context when it comes to Dan Schneider. In my opinion, Dan Schneider is a creep. Full blown, my opinion, creep. And you know, we we've obviously, you know, this is all in my opinion, but it's also been other people's opinions. Like, you know, Jeanette McCurdy's book. When we read about Jeanette McCurdy and she talks about the creator, we can all assume who she's talking about. And he was a creep. And so when you look back at a lot of the footage that came out of Dan Schneider's shows in context to what he was like as a person, then these things are different. It's not just a kid in a bikini. It's a kid in a bikini on Dan Schneider's show. Right? It's a kid in a bikini on Nickelodeon, <laughs> which also, in my opinion, Nickelodeon has been extremely complicit when it comes to Dan Schneider's problematic, creepy content. So that's what I have to say about that. But, but moving on, let's get back to the email. He goes, the feet thing. This is a huge stretch for me to see it as victimizing in any way because of the circumstances. Feet are both gross and funny at the same time. Are they gross? It's one of those body parts that can be constantly called upon to be either gross or funny. With adults, TV and movies usually go for butts and B-O-O-B-S. 
<laughs> wait, I can't wait for this. Um, to get the funny raunchy, which would have been clearly unacceptable for kids, at least on a Nickelodeon or Dan set, it would be unacceptable. Interesting. Interesting, Matt. So let's break this down for a second. First of all, let's go into Dan Schneider's tweets about feats, shall we? Let's go into his many, 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 many tweets on feats. And not only his tweets on feats, not only his tweets on feats, but his content when it came to feet. I mean, you don't have to look much. You don't have to look much when it comes to content by Dan Schneider with children feet, in my opinion, inappropriately. You don't. You really don't. And then when it comes to Dan Schneider actually tweeting himself about kids' feet, you really don't have to go that far. It's not really a huge stretch to, to find the problematic aspects of Dan Schneider with kids' feet. So let's go through them. Number one, little Ariana Grande from at Victorious smiles at one of her co-star's feet. But whose foot is it? Whose foot is it? Dan Schneider... Dan Schneider seems like the only person who seems to be excited about figuring out which kid's foot it is. Which child star from his TV shows, which, which foot is it? It seems like it's Dan Schneider who's the most excited about figuring it out, which is beyond disturbing. Like, really, just like, what what the fuck dude like who even tweets this how old is he here is like he in his 40s pick carly tickles sam's very unusual toes if you have a moment will you please name sam's toes for us okay you know matt underwood if you're watching which maybe you not you're not but you you don't see this being weird in any way like carly tickles sam's very unusual toes like What's unusual about the toes? And why Why are you tweeting this? And if you have a moment, will you please name Sam's toes for us? Like, what? I haven't seen any other creator on Nickelodeon saying anything even remotely close to this. The toe, recently adorned with a special toe flower, belongs to the sweet and hilariously talented Miss Jeanette McCurdy. With a smiley face. Here's Victoria's. Have you ever tried to eat a foot without ketchup? It's disgusting. Okay. That's awesome. Thanks. I hope you don't have too much sand between your toes now. If so, hashtag take a toe shower. Take a, ch a toe shower with a smiley face is just... Why? Why is a grown man? Why is a grown man tweeting this? And not just once or twice, but like multiple times. Here's another one. Video. Would you like to see Victoria Justice pour ketchup all over her feet? Well, here you go. And it's the website, The Slap. Like, okay. No, I honestly personally don't need to see Victoria Justice pour ketchup all over her feet. That's just me. That's just personally me. I don't need to see it. I don't know why you're trying to bait a whole bunch of people to want to be down with seeing it. I don't really find it to be funny. I find it to be really gross, and I find it to be very unnecessary. And here's another important tweet that I came across. Now, someone, like, someone might like to argue that Dan Schneider, you know, it's not about blanking children, right? But here he is making a tweet to his wife, his actual wife. And it says, do you want to go for a drive? Do you want to go into our room and watch Too Cute? We have four on our DVR. I'll rub your feet. And I just find it interesting because here he isn't talking about fucking, he's not even talking about children. He's talking about his wife here. And so it really has the clear crossover, right, from children to, to his wife, who I'm guessing he has 
blank, blank, blank with, right? And hopefully consensually. But you see the crossover there. So it wasn't just him making tweets about children's feet. He's also here talking about his wife's feet. His wife's feet. And going into the room, which is a very intimate place, etc. And so, you know, for me, that was a very clear crossover where I, I, I personally have to draw, draw a line. Now, what else do we... Oh, this one. This one is just wild. Okay, so here's Dan Schneider saying the most absurd tweet thus far. I think this is the creepiest one, in my opinion, when it comes to the toes. He says, toes, similar to fingers, but not nearly as good. Who agrees? Toes, similar to fingers, but not nearly as good. Who agrees? You know what, dude? I've never really thought about it. I've never really, I've never really thought about it. Can I go full screen for one second? I've never really thought about the difference between fingers and toes being one being better than the other. Obviously, I'm not trying to eat food with my toes. And so, you know, I can have a clear separation between my fingers and my toes. But what the fuck are you talking about, man? Do you can can you not see how this tweet can be perceived? How this tweet can be seen? And we're talking about children. Children. And so when Matt Underwood is saying that, you know, there is a it's a huge stretch. Matt, co-star to co-star here, right? I don't think it's a huge stretch. I don't. I think it was all up in our faces constantly being on a Dan Schneider show. It was all up in every audience member's face that was watching Dan Schneider's shows. That there was a very clear Wait, wait, is that hands in feet? <laughs> I'm dead. So here's hands and feet. <laughs> clear difference, clear difference for sure. Which one is better? What, what exactly are you talking about though too? In, in what, when, you, when it comes to eating or when it comes to rubbing them? Dan Schneider, be a little bit maybe more specific about what you're trying to talk about here because it's a little it's it's a little too specific and vague at the same time that I have a problem with. Like it's a little vague, it's a little too specific and we're also talking about children, which Dan Schneider in my opinion has never gave a fuck about. He's honestly never given two fucks about how it's going to look for, you know, for children. What it's going to do to children, how children are going to feel about it when they get older. Dan Schneider in my opinion wasn't really thinking about that. He didn't have our best interests in mind. Okay, he didn't have our best interests in mind. He was too busy tweeting away about trying to figure out if 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 fingers or or toes were better for what I don't know. And who agrees? That's what he was more concerned about than our well being. Than our well being. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, I guess this is an actual foot photo of someone. I guess this is Jeanette McCurdy's toes. I mean, dude, this is fucking crazy. This is actually nuts. He's like, pick. I got to pick. Like, okay, of what? Someone's toe? A child's toe. This toe belongs to one of the stars of one of my shows. I'm kidding. I honestly, I honestly, I almost cannot even deal with this, you guys. I thank you so much, Katie, for joining the chef's kiss while I'm having a little bit of a fucking nervous breakdown here. What? Why is he so excited about, about sharing kids' feet? Dan, why are you so stoked? Why are you so stoked? about sharing kids feet allegedly i mean i'm i'm guessing this is fucking you because i can I, there's too many tweets here that are coming from your profile in regards to children's feet so i'm guessing this is you bro <laughs> the hands and the feet i can't it's just it's actually out of fucking control he is so stoked who where did he get that photo by the way of Jeanette McCurdy's toes I'm sorry, but but where 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 is he getting these these picks? And he starts it with pick. Like, 
what, 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 are we asking for you to show us Jeanette McCurdy's toes? I wonder how many people are really in his DMs asking for the 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 child star's toes. Adam, do you mind bringing me one more of these? I just I'm really curious. Like who who is actually asking him? Down? Is it loud? Okay. Okay. Sorry guys, but I'm just losing it a little bit when I just see how many tweets, how many images. Here's another image, and I don't even want to show this, but you know, look at this. This is Jeanette McCurdy and you know uh Miranda Cosgrove. And here she here they are. I mean, you know what, man? This is just I don't know. I, I, I'm just not comfortable with it. I, I don't know any any person who would be comfortable with this. I don't know. I, I just don't know. I mean, can, wait. Wait, Adam, are you seeing this photo? Are we pulling up this photo? This, oh my God. This, you know, I don't want to show this, but at the same time, I think it's very important to maybe remind someone like Matt Underwood who is thinking it's a huge stretch to talk about Dan Schneider's, in my opinion, obsession with 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 feet. And, you know, you guys, like, look at this image here. Look at this. And look at this. And what else is there? I mean, there's just so... Look at this. What's going on here? Why so many feet? Just why so many feet? And why are why why is he doing so many things to the feet? It's so fucking weird. And then you know, God, man. And then we have this Ariana Grande thing. Is just, I just I don't even want to show it, but it's like so fucked up. This is this is really pro this is really a problem. And for someone like Matt Underwood allegedly to be emailing fans of of the show who are suspicious or maybe have their concerns about Dan Schneider's shows, I mean, Matt Underwood, what, did I call him something different? <laughs> Hopefully I'm saying him by the right name. Shay, welcome to the dinner party, Shay. Thank you so much for being here. You know, uh, this is... This is a problem, guys. This is a problem. This shouldn't be happening. Nickelodeon was allowing this type of behavior to to happen. And I find it problematic. I do. And do I find it creepy? Yes, I do. I do find it creepy. I do find it problematic. I don't like anything about this. I don't like anything about this. And then... Wait, I just want to pull up one last thing before I continue his email because I saw it here. Oh, my God. There's so much feet stuff. It's actually wild. Wait, is there another one? Here it is. Okay, here. So here's Jeanette McCurdy getting her feet rubbed. And, you know, we saw the tweet from Dan Schneider about him adding his wife saying he wants to rub her feet at night. And this is what I mean about the crossover. And this is what I mean about context. Because this isn't just... This isn't just a person who is isolated in a vacuum, one tweet only, one image only, one scene only of, of kids' feet, right? This is too many times, over and over and over again. Oh, wait, that's mad. Okay, so let's continue it. I hope that I was able... I hope that I was able to show Matt Underwood that the the toes scenario here is maybe not a huge stretch. And maybe, if anything, is the screen on? Oh, okay. I'm back. Um, I really hope that Matt Underwood does understand that it's not a huge stretch. And if anything, it's a stretch no longer than a toe. Okay, I, I think the stretch is no longer than a toe. In my personal, my personal opinion. So let's move on to what he has to say here. 
It may seem like a thing to see that feet are referenced so much, but digging a little deeper and it becomes clear that there are few other acceptable body parts to make jokes about with kids. In my opinion, it's actually a pretty respectable thing to do instead of constantly pushing the envelope and using more and more body parts. What? As other networks and creators continue to do. If he always referenced ears, would that have been his alleged fetish? Yeah, it depends about how many times he's referencing fucking ears. If he's tweeting about ears, wanting kids to send their ears, you know, putting ketchup on the ears, you know, like, yeah, maybe. If it was ears in the same way that it is toes and feet, yeah, I, I think it might be an alleged fetish for sure. Are ears even funny enough to constantly make jokes about? I don't even know, dude. I don't even know if toes. I don't know if toes are that funny. Ears? Sure. I'm sure toes and ears go along this. It depends what you're doing with them. Are you pouring ketchup on the ears? Are you? What are you doing with the ears? Are you doing the same thing with the ears that you were doing with the toes? Because then, sure, I'm think, I think you would be able to maybe then spin it the same way that Matt Underwood's trying to spin it. But it's like, dude, to, if it was the same thing with ears, I think, yes, I would also have a problem with the ears thing. I don't think it's just, it's be, not just because it's feet. It's just any kid's body part that's being done over and over again in a way that really starts to seem like it is an alleged fetish. Also, it makes it seem as though it's like almost like to hyper normalize, like, it feels like Dan Schneider, in my opinion, was trying to hyper-normalize his alleged fetish so that children are desensitized to the blank, 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 blank of feet. This is my opinion. Because you have to remember, his audience are children, and he chose to make content for children. That's what he chose to do. And it's so much, so many feet. Him tweeting about all of the kids' feet, sharing pics of the kids' feet to a point where it's like he's desensitizing and brooming, brooming his audience of, of children, honestly, in my opinion, to, to not bat any lashes or whatever the, the saying is when it comes to this. When it comes to the exploitation of these children, this body part of a child, which happens to be the feet and toes for, for Dan Schneider. So Matt's defense, Marissa, he had to exploit some body parts on these kids. So he chose the feet. Would you like it to be ears? Hey, Marissa, that's exactly it. That literally is it. He had to exploit some party of body part of the children. He had to exploit something when it came to the children so he chose feet and it's weird though that he tweeted to his wife about rubbing her feet late night in their room etc so the context the crossover is beyond problematic all right so so we're continuing on to this email it's actually a pretty respectable thing to do if he always referenced ears, God, dude, I can't believe he had time to write this email. Noses are off limits. Wait, wait, wait. Are ears even funny enough to constantly make jokes about? He said noses are off limits due to genetic variations being used as racist tropes. Okay. Why are we getting into this right now? We're talking about kids' feet. He's trying to find like any type of justification why Dan Schneider chose feet. Maybe he chose feet. Because that's what I'm not going to say. I'm not even going to go there. But maybe he chose feet for his own reasons, right? Maybe that's why it wasn't ears. Maybe that's why it wasn't an eyelash. Maybe that's why it wasn't an eyebrow. Maybe there's a reason why he chose feet. Josh, I said that. Say hello. Hi, Josh. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. It's so fucking weird. Okay, so... All right, so hands are off limits due to the adult innuendo of big hands mean... Wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Matt Underwood did not say that. Allegedly. Allegedly, Matt Underwood did not say that. Hands are off limits due to the adult innuendo of big hands. 
You know, Matt Underwood, you really should be, Dan Schneider should hire Matt Underwood as his, I don't know, PR consultant or his manager or, you know, I, I don't know. He he just, I feel like he should really, he should play a bigger part than just the Zoe 102, you know, Zoe 101 reboot movie, whatever the fuck you want to call it. He has a bigger part to play here. I don't even think Dan Schneider realizes it. But Dan, if you're watching, Matt, if you're watching, you guys should hit up one another. You obviously have more in common than I thought you did. And you might be able to uh, get Dan Schneider to say a statement, you know, when it comes to all of his allegations. Maybe you can help construct his response to all of his allegations instead of him having Russell Simmons or whatever the fuck his name is. Russell Hicks. Russell Hicks, right? Russell Hicks saying his statements for him. So, okay, this is why he's not using hands. Got it. Continuing on. The options are very limited. This is what creepy men sound like. like what child's body part can I use, man, to exploit? <laughs> like, the, the options are so limited. Boo-hoo. Don't exploit any kid's body part. How about that? Feet have a fetish attached to them, too, but it's far less. No, it's not, actually. Foot fetish is probably one of the most common fetish there is. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe making a huge stretch here, whatever, but I'm pretty positive that when I think of random fetish, for some reason, my mind goes to foot fetish because it's one of the most, I don't know, out there fetishes there are, like the weirder ones. Maybe I'm... I don't know, maybe I have a very vanilla mind here, obviously, but when I think of weird fetish, I think of feet. And so it's weird that Matt Underwood allegedly is saying here, feet have a fetish attached to them too, but it's far less. I don't know, man. I, I, I think the ear, wouldn't the ear be less of a... <laughs> I can't even believe I'm talking about fetishes of body parts. I can't believe Matt Underwood's even arguing about what fucking body part is less of a fetish of a child. Where am I? In my opinion, Matt defending a blank says so much about him. I am. Shay, I'm right there with you. Dan Schneider's super creepy. He's super fucking creepy. Okay. Anyways, moving on. So let's debate what kid body part is less of a fetish, right, Matt Underwood? Uh, far less so than any other kid-friendly kid-friendly body part. Is there... <laughs> moving on, Matt. I can't even believe you even said kid-friendly body part, bro. We also should consider that Dan has literally decades of shows that he has written. He has to come up with jokes and funny situations. Oh, teehee. Oh, poor Dan. You, Dan, you have to come up with so many funny situations and jokes all the time for children. How about you stop exploiting them? <laughs> Maybe it's about stopping and not stopping exploiting children, bro. I don't know if it's really about funny situations and jokes. Then maybe don't be a grown man writing these shows. I don't know. Uh, for years and years and years, you'd imagine you might run out of jokes pretty quickly, and maybe you'd have to reuse some jokes over and over. Feet being a go-to gross slash funny joke to use. It's not a far stretch of the imagination that he used feet a lot because it was a joke that always landed a laugh. So it could be more a laziness call. Well, he's really going for it. You know what, Matt? I think you're, <laughs> you're making more of a stretch to defend Dan Schneider. Matt Underwood is making way more, way more of a stretch to defend Dan Schneider <laughs> than this fan was taking to maybe call out the creepiness factors of Dan Schneider's kid shows. <laughs> this is a 45 paragraph long or something email and he has the nerve to call these fans, et cetera, huge stretch when it comes to feet. I don't know, man, look how long this email it is. Look how long it's taking you to try to defend Dan Schneider. It's, it's pretty absurd. It's pretty absurd. Okay, so it's not a far stretch of the imagination that he used feet a lot because it was a joke that always landed a laugh. So it could be more a laziness call than a fetish call. Yeah, he could come up with more jokes to avoid overusing feet jokes, which he obviously does considering literally every episode of every show is not about feet. But how many are? Matt, have you ever counted how many are? How many feet? How many kids' feet? 
are in Dan Schneider's shows. Have you ever counted? I do remember your mom, by the way, counting how many like how many lines each actor had in an episode. So why don't you start counting how many feet episodes there are? How many times a feet innuendo is mentioned? How many times an inappropriate Dan Schneider joke is done in every single one of his TV shows? I'm just curious. Why don't you count those instead of wasting my time with this email, to be quite honest? How about you start counting all the feet? Feet exploitations. Every episode of every show is not about feet, but let's be honest. It's much easier to fall back on a joke you know will get a laugh, especially after writing jokes for multiple decades. All right, moving on. His joking about feet online, maybe he came to realize a long time ago that feet seem to be an acceptable thing to joke about with kids. So he keeps using that. As an adult that works with kids, I personally understand that it's not easy to joke with kids. What? Kids themselves are gross with their jokes. What? And adults cannot play into those jokes because it's inappropriate. In order to avoid being inappropriate, it's understandable to pick an acceptable joke and stick to it, making it your thing. I have a thing. Matt Underwood, your thing is defending Dan Schneider. Your thing is writing novel-like emails to random fans defending Dan Schneider and his creepy behavior. That's your thing. That's your thing. At least that's what I just learned. I let kids give me a high five and I go flying. Bro, that, dude, pouring ketchup on kids' feet, asking kids to send their feet pics to you, showing pics of kids' feet saying, ooh, look, I got a pic here of this kid's foot. Like, bro, this is not the fucking same as you doing a high five with a kid and then pretending you're flying. These are not comparable scenarios. And I'm actually pissed off you're trying to act all smart here and compare these two things. Like you're some type of logical bro. Like you're teaching this girl a lesson or something. You're teaching us nothing, honestly. The only thing I've learned thus far in this email is that you have too much time on your hands, way too much time, or maybe too much, too much feet on your hands. You have too much feet on your hands and you are you like defending Dan Schneider and 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 mansplaining your perspective to a random fan. That I mean, sorry, but but really you have too much feet on your hands. Too much too much feet on your hands. I I am my brain is mush from this. My brain is actually I said too much too much feet on your hands. Whatever the saying is, bro, you got too much feet. So, so moving on, all right, moving on. While still finding things that are funny and feet jokes seem pretty safe and funny to me. Wait, what are you saying? Wait, let me go back here. I don't do this co consistently just because it's funny. I do it because it's a safe joke for kids and by making it my thing. The ki you know what, Matt? What if, though? Here, let, let, let's just go. What if you took off your shoes every time you were around children and wanted to do a foot five and then pretended to go flying. Does that change the scenario even a little bit? Like, would that change the scenario? Would they be a little bit more weirded out? Like, you're trying to you're trying to compare hands to feet, and I would like to differ here. <laughs> okay, hands are always visible. Feet, not so much. So, if you pulled, literally took off your sneakers, I can't even believe I'm doing this right now. If you took off your fucking sneakers and took off your socks, and then wanted to put your feet to their feet and then pretending to go flying, would it be a different scenario? I'm just curious. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I can't believe we're even comparing feet and hands. I can't even believe we're comparing feet and hands, but I do wanna see Matt Underwood. I do wanna see him doing a, and I know I don't actually, I don't want him doing this, but I want him to think about it. I do want him to fucking think about it. Okay, so moving on. A separate but useful example, Sloan. Oh, here comes Sloan. What do you have to say about Sloan, Matt? What do you have to say? Sloan was the only person, in my opinion, who did any type of investigative work into Dan Schneider and his creepiness and his TV shows. Journalists didn't even touch this shit. 
no one wanted to comment on 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 the feet on the kids feet on the feet tweets on the uh, god okay journalists didn't want to touch it sloan you know sure there might be flaws like he's just getting information but at least he was trying to get to the bottom of something and bringing some awareness to the fact that it was not necessarily okay right it wasn't necessarily okay so okay a separate but useful example sloan referenced someone calling carly hot in a comment on the computer in an episode. They did a super stretch to attach it to a grown man who's a producer, as if this man is actually saying that to Carly. Whatever, guy. Whatever, Matt Underwood. It's not only illegal to use random people's names in movies or TV, they could get sued for using their name or likeness, as it's legally called, but it's also a lot easier to come up with names for unseen characters if you're choosing from people who are involved. Yeah, Matt, but when it's an actual, what I'm getting here is that they're, they named the guy, it was an actual producer of the show. Maybe when we're talking about the hotness of a child, et cetera, I'm trying to read this properly here, but, but maybe when we're talking about uh, attractiveness of children, which shouldn't even be said out loud right now and shouldn't be happening, that we don't use a grown man producer name for this type of scenario. I don't know, that's just me. That's just me. It's not only illegal, It's first of all, you can use random names. It's not only illegal to use random people's names. Dude, you can use any person's name. Just Jack, Joe, you think like one Joe owns all the Joes? Dude, they're, what are you even talking about? Everyone has an individual name. No one owns one person's name. But it's also a lot easier to come up with names for unseen characters if you're choosing from people who are involved. All right, Matt, whatever. But that sounds boring. So why would Sloan mention that? Sloan just sticks to the salacious rumor aspect of it, completely leaving out the understandable, less juicy explanation. So the viewer doesn't even have the second explanation to consider. They can only base their judgment off their juicy BS Sloan includes. If Sloan were responsibly reporting, why do you care about Sloan so much? If Sloan were responsibly reporting it, they would at the very least provide both explanations and allow the viewer to make up their mind. But they don't. They don't seem to care about both explanation. Great point, Matt. So when a kid is watching children feet, right? Many, 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 many times over and over and over again with ketchup being poured on it, a toe being stuck in the sink. Uh, what else have I seen? Toes in a girl's mouth on a bed. You know, when you see these images over and over and over again, the children are not being able to see the adults POV of that and their concerns, right? They're not being able to hear how that could be seen as creepy and that could be exploiting children child stars kids aren't able to hear that other side so what's actually happening instead is the children are being desensitized and someone like dan schneider is being able to hyper normalize hyper normalize the exploitation of children's feet to the point where he's tweeting about it all the time I mean, he put, he, it wasn't even just in the shows, he's tweeting it. So, right, right, Matt. When you're not able to see the other perspective, what happens? What happens when you're not able to see the other perspective? It's hypernormalized, right? Hypernormalized. You get desensitized to it. It's not that big of a deal. So, cool. I wish you would have seen this perspective when it came to what when it actually matters, in my opinion. Okay, so as far as Alexa thing goes, okay, so here's where he throws in me, which, you know, I'm I'm honestly used to by now. As far as the Alexa thing goes, I can confidently say she is being a dramatic diva who seeks attention. Thanks, Matt. I am such a uh, dramatic, first of all, it's such a misogynist trope right there. A dramatic diva, what? Me feeling sad about the fact that not only did you all bully me when I was on the show, 
and make me feel like fucking shit all the time and leave me out all the time. But then fast forward, a reunion happens and you don't invite me once again. So not only was I not invited to the trailer for lunch, Paul Butcher's rap party where he went to everybody in front of me and handed out the RSVP, whatever invites. And then when he came to me, he's like, nope, sorry, not you. And then went on to everybody else. I was constantly uninvited to things. Now, fast forward, I'm almost 30 fucking years old. We all are. You guys are actually older than me. How old are you guys now? 36? 35? We're all old. And then I'm not invited to the reunion. Yeah, it hurt my feelings. And yeah, I was expressive about it because I held it in for a very long time. And that's my right to. But to call me a dramatic diva, you know what I would say to you, Matt? It's a little bit. No, I'm sorry. It's a huge stretch. It's a huge stretch to call me a dramatic diva. Moving on. I have no problem saying that because I know how hard we work to be her friend growing up. No, you didn't. You guys did not work hard to be my friend. And also, you shouldn't have to work hard to be anyone's friend, honestly, on set. It wasn't like I was making it super hard for you all to be friends with me. I was actually just a likable kid who just wanted to be friends with you all. And none of you really gave a flying fuck. Honestly. So, no, that's wrong, too. Sean, Chris, and I, in particular, went above and beyond. No, I'll correct you again. Sean and Chris went a little bit. They did a li I saw more effort when it came to Sean and Chris to be my friend or to make me s feel seen. Matt, you, I don't even know whose friend you were, honestly, on set. <laughs> like, you were in your own fucking world. So, I, I don't know. But Sean and Chris, sure, I don't know if it was above and beyond, but it was normal. It was, like, just making me feel seen and heard being on set. Year after year, you mean two years. And for years following her release from the show. No, Matt, you never reached out to me, I don't think. After the release of the show, I never heard from any of you. None of you checked in on me. Nope, nope, nope. The only person I actually hung out with after being off of the show was Sean Flynn. So, no. To be her friend and include her, but she behaved then a lot like she is behaving now. What? What? That I was hurt when people hurt my feelings? That I was hurt when I was called names? That I was hurt when I was left out of things that I shouldn't have been left out of? What? I, I, what? What exactly am I behaving like now? Coming up with rumors to bring excitement into what most of us assume was an ex already exciting situation. This is where I guess the Jamie Lynn Spears thing comes up, which I'm still very curious. Who is the one to either lie to Jamie Lynn Spears and tell her that I said this when I didn't? Or if Jamie made it up herself? But I'm very curious who told her this because here he's saying she accused Jamie Lynn of having lice one day, which I never did in my entire life. Swear on my life. Out of the blue. I've never been able to get that memory out of my head. What memory, dude? What memory? We tried so hard even after that and countless other incidents that you can't name, that you can't mention, and that you have no evidence of, by the way. Her recollections of her time of the show are either flawed or she's outright lying to save face as a majority, majority of humans naturally do. Well then, maybe you are doing the natural thing that humans do here and you seem to be saving face. What a stupid argument. It's like, that can be used anywhere, even for this email. <laughs> so then he goes into Jeffrey Epstein. He goes into Pizzagate. He goes into everything. He talks about how... NDAs are used. Dan's credibility went up in my eyes when the investigations in concluded a couple years ago. Had he legit done anything to make a minor uncomfortable with any of his sets, he would have ended up in jail. Full stop. Full stop, Matt Pro. Oh, wait, I keep calling him Matt Pro up because I literally think of them as the same people. Matt Underwood. Sorry, I can't even know which one, which Matt it is because very similar. Matt Underwood. Full stop. Full stop. After that investigation happened, after that investigation happened, Jeanette McCurdy wrote a book where she talks about the creator and how he made her feel uncomfortable. How he made her feel uncomfortable on set. Okay? Full stop, bro. Full stop. And guess what? Dan Schneider is not in jail. 
Dan Schneider's not in jail. No one even knows where the fuck Dan Schneider is, honestly. No one knows. He's somewhere. He's somewhere. But he's not in jail. And so, again, here you are. Male mansplaining to this girl fan. Something you know nothing about. You weren't there. You didn't know. You think an investigation internally within Nickelodeon is going to be able to expose Dan Schneider's creepy behavior that he was doing, full stop? No. That's not how the industry works, bro. These institutions cover up problematic behavior, crimes, etc. They cover them up. That's what they do. So no, full stop, that's not what ended up happening, just to be quite honest with you. It's not what ended up happening. What did end up happening, though, is Jeanette McCurdy did let us know how she felt uncomfortable around Dan Schneider and also, I mean, the creator. And for me, I also did the same. But no, you don't care about our voices, right? We're just attention-seeking and, or what else, a dr dramatic divas, as you like to call women that uh, speak up for themselves or girls that like to speak up for themselves. So, uh, where was I? We legitimately cannot go any... Oh, here he goes. Okay. So, Dan's credibility, full stop, whatever, bro. There are literally hundreds of people on set surrounding him and the kids at all times. Not true. For example, with Ian, we all know that now. That's not true also. We legitimately could not go anywhere, not even to the bathroom, without a state-provided social worker accompanying us. That's bullshit also. There was that that is also bullshit, Matt. There wasn't like some bodyguard. By the way, if that social worker, for example, was busy, which I don't even know what he's talking about social worker, you mean set teacher? What social worker? Set teacher? Let's say she needs or he needs to be on set to watch the other kids and one kid has to go to the bathroom, then the talent coordinator, someone like Ian, who put me in great danger, right? could have put me in great danger, would be the one to bring me to the bathroom. So it's not like always a social worker or some professional. It could be someone like Ian, who is such a tool, who literally put me in the trailer. We all know the story. Not going into it today. But that's a lie. You see how he's trying to explain something to somebody, mansplain something that's honestly not really the full picture. It's not really the truth here. The social worker doesn't work for Nickelodeon or Dan. They do work for Nickelodeon. They work, they do. They can work for the state of California, but they work also for Nickelodeon and are paid handsomely to protect us. Who's, wait, how much are they paid handsomely? What does that even mean? Every single time I had to take off my shirt, which was often, by the way, that's already a little bit weird that you're having to say that you had to take off your shirt often on a, on a show that was written by Dan Schneider. My social worker went through a series of questions making sure I was okay with it. I never got asked anything like this. The weather wasn't too cold, hot or cold, and even that another person was there to hold an umbrella. Also, hold on a second. Didn't Matt Underwood say in here that about B-O-O-B-S? Can we play a clip really quickly? I'm going to pull up this, um, this TikTok really quickly of... He said it would be unacceptable, that it would be unacceptable for Dan Schneider to ever exploit or blank, blank, blank other kids' body parts, like other body parts of children. Well, let's pull up something of Quinn really quickly that I wasn't even in this season, but guess who was? Matt Underwood. So, Matt, let me remind you really quickly. Can I hear this? Is the speaker on? Zoe, yo, crash, crash. Oh, oh, oh. oh. all right. That's great. Very nice, nice Quinn. A plus. <laughs> or D plus. <laughs> Zoe, yo, crash, crash. Oh, oh, oh. oh. all right. That's great. Pretty Very nice, nice Quinn. A plus. <laughs> or D plus. <laughs> yo, so Zoe, who wrote that crash. line? By the way, I just, I'm just very curious. Who 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 wrote that line? Who wrote the D plus line? And why are we conflating? What's the word I'm looking for? Whatever the hell that was when it comes to a child. 
But yet Matt was on that set for that season, but he didn't help Quinn not be exploited for that scene. Did you? Because wouldn't that be something you mentioned in this email that you did see Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon exploit parts, body parts of a child that are not kid friendly? Like you like to call it, what are kid friendly body parts? I would like to say that this area is not a kid friendly body part. It's not. And yet no one helped Quinn not be exploited there. And if anything, Chris Massey literally said D plus. No one, no one cared about that. Nobody cared about that. Nobody. And I'm really appalled that that scene happened and no one said a fucking thing. Now, let me remind you of another episode, Matt Underwood. This was in a season that I was in. Okay, so let's pull this up. Now, I feel like the clothes for our commercial should be really cool, like funky. I'm down with funky. Okay, so I sketched out a few possible outfits. No, you know who went a little overboard on those? The person who went a little overboard on those was, was Dan Schneider, a grown-ass man, and Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon went a little overboard on those. Not Jamie Lynn Spears. Not Jamie, not Zoe, Nickelodeon, and Dan Schneider. So there's another time that not a kid-friendly body part was exploited and used, Matt. And that was my season. There's also another episode where I pull up a shirt and talk about how this shirt makes me look chesty. Chesty. So there is another time that a not kid-friendly body part was exploited by Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon. So I just wanted to remind Matt that it wasn't just feet, but since you weren't a girl on the show, you seem to forget what we went through, or at least some of us that are willing to speak out about it went through. So moving on, we legitimately could not go anywhere, yada, 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 tight ship my ass. Look at that fucking TikTok I just showed. What tight ship? What tight ship, bro? I would never refute an allegation I have no knowledge to base a judgment on. I wholeheartedly hope for some decency to be brought to Hollywood. No, you don't. You don't give a fuck, Matt. You didn't care then. You don't care now. Having said that, I cannot allow myself to dive headfirst into believing any and every allegation I hear. Okay, Ashton Kutcher. I still must maintain a level of credi credulity because I have to keep in mind that there are two sides to each of these situations. And no matter which side the truth comes from, people will be getting hurt. Wouldn't you want to not hurt the survivor? Are you more worried about hurting the alleged predator and the institution's feelings? <laughs> what, a, what an American you are. You're more afraid of hurting capitalism than you are caring about a child that was exploited on set that's all i heard there man that's personally all i fucking heard what is that two people's feelings are going to get hurt i would rather let capitalism and dan schneider's feelings get hurt than the children that were exploited on his shows people who hurt others need to be held accountable that includes those who make false allegations solely to benefit themselves you're embarrassing matt pro <laughs> Matt Underwood. God, they're the same person to me. My brain is wiring the same person. I'd be extra careful with this Sloan person. Ooh, you know who's really creepy? Sloan. Not Dan Schneider, who exploited kids' feet. Exploited kids' not friendly body parts. No, 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 no. Don't worry about those. Matt Underwood is like, don't worry about Dan Schneider. Don't worry about Nickelodeon. Don't worry about the people that have exploited children. Worry about Sloan, who maybe he has some things wrong in his videos, sure, but for the most part is le at least trying to show what happened or what's creepy about Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon. Especially after hearing they're taking donations. Donations? Money is a powerful motivator, and people tend to lie about their motives when money is involved. If someone tells me they are spreading information, they cannot themselves prove beyond reasonable doubt solely with the best of intention. 
I will find them irresponsible at the least and liars at the worst. If their intentions are solely good and help, they would not accept donations and they especially would not spread information they cannot prove. Whatever, dude. This is the guy who took the reboot Zoe 102. Whatever. I want to be clear that I'm not giving you my opinion on this to protect Dan. I don't work with him or Nickelodeon and never plan to again. Wait. Wait, here's Matt Underwood allegedly saying that he will not work with Dan again, will not work with Nickelodeon, and then fast forward does the Zoe 102 reboot. So what? You never plan to again, not because I don't like him. No, no, of course not. But because I just don't see that being a thing in my future. We're on different paths now. I hate to break the news to you, Matt, but you and Dan are on the same path now. You're defending exploitation of children feet, etc. You're on very similar, very similar paths now. Ugh, this email, I'm just going to leak this email, by the way. I'll put it on the Reddit um, for everyone to see. Um, I'm, I'm covering up some things because there was private information that sadly Matt Underwood did share in the email. So I blocked that out to protect his privacy because I respect his privacy when it comes to that. But I'll, I'll let everybody read this email. But he goes on to Sloan because he's very fired up about Sloan. The Sloan person is a joke. I'm sorry to say that to you. I've seen their kind too many times to be fooled by them. <laughs> they want views. They know juicy rumors get views. I tried watching portions of their videos, but with each one, I'm just really appalled by their video to stretch situations to make them sound graphic or horrible. I don't want to offend you, TBH. I honestly like you, TBH. What is this friendship, by the way? But there is no nice way to put this. The Sloan character is playing you for a fool to get money and or attention. You're hurting yourself by putting your belief in them without seeking tangible firsthand information. I spoke out about this in 2019. What are you talking about? It's a textbook play being employed by countless people online right now, and it's dangerous. You know who's dangerous? Nickelodeon. You know who really cares? Oh, this? Okay. So this is one of my favorite parts because Matt Underwood says here that journalists are the ones who are reputable news outlets. They're the ones that we should obviously be putting all of our faith into and trusting them. And so this was before the expose about Dan Schneider came out by Business Insider. His email was prior to that. So what's so interesting about that, though, timeline wise, is that this, though, was also this email was also written before he agreed to do the Zoe 102 movie. So here he's saying that journalists are reputable news outlets and that we should trust them. But when the expose came out about Dan Schneider, he went right into working for Nickelodeon again and never spoke out against him never said he stood with the females that were on Dan Schneider's shows who spoke up against Dan Schneider. He never said a thing. You never went up and beyond and out of your way to make us feel heard or respected. You never admitted that you were wrong about your perception of Dan Schneider, your defense of Dan Schneider. <laughs> Silent. But maybe that's because you're attention seeking and maybe that's because you wanted to be in the reboot on Predator Plus. I don't know. I'm just saying, though, maybe maybe you're a little bit of a diva. I don't know. Maybe just a just a little bit of a diva and and picked P Predator Plus over, you know, standing up for your co-stars that felt exploited on the show that you were on. That I can actually pull up TikTok videos that actually show us being exploited like your friend Aaron Sanders. And Erin can go ahead and say maybe that she doesn't feel exploited. But from my perception, seeing a child having their, you know what, that happening written by men, very problematic. And having the co-star say a D plus when it's a kid's show, very problematic. Sorry to break the news to you guys. So moving on. They have to be checked and double checked for their out. Okay, so here we go. He goes, the journalists at reputable news outlets, they have to be checked and double checked for their allegations. They must provide evidence to their editors who would tell them to take a hike if they ever tried to publish stuff like Sloan does. What's so interesting, though, is some things that Sloan mentioned in his videos were in the Business Insider articles. So funny. 
They put in countless hours of research to find new, tangible first-hand evidence. If you ever wonder why big press doesn't push these stories, it's because they have legal obligations not to once. That's not true. Actually, a lot of the time these stories get buried because the lawyers... The lawyers are in the back pockets of of the fucking predators. Matt Prokop. Ma- Matt Underwood. <laughs> Wait, I need to Photoshop Matt Underwood from Zoe 101 with Matt Prokop's face. Matt Underwood. You don't under understand how journalists even all the the obstacles they have to go through to get a story published. So many. So many. Because the lawyers. The legal team are in the back pockets of the predators. And us survivors have to deal with that all the time when it comes to getting our story heard in publications. It's it's almost impossible to get press to publish even public court documents about somebody. Something that's actually out there for the public. Impossible. Can take up to a year plus. So Matt... You don't know what you're talking about. I'm so sorry, Matt, but you do not know what you're talking about. You really, really do not. You don't. And you should maybe spend less time, less time defending someone like this when you don't actually know what the fuck you're talking about. Really. I mean, it's it's actually, this is like offensive to survivors everywhere. The things that we have to go through to get our stories heard. And he's trying to make it seem like it's some walk in the park. People just end up in jail and the story just ends up out there in the press. Dude, if it happens like that, it would be a whole new world. But no, that's not how it goes down. That's just not how it goes down. Sorry, that just pissed me off. I can assure you if you're seeing a gossip story on YouTube that isn't picked up by NYT, LA Times, or any other major media outlet right away, it's because the story is false or there isn't enough information to make a responsible allegation. Not true. It's because they are not even doing the investigative work that they should be doing. If major news outlets pick up a big allegation but then don't follow up on it anymore, it's because the allegations fell hard on the false end of the scale talking about dude if they if allegations don't continue that's because no one gives a fuck about survivors matt underwood no one cares about survivors no one it's it's actually very rare that people especially the press especially institutions care about survivors It's not because it falls more on the false end of the spectrum. And fuck you for saying that to all survivors. Are you anti-survivor or something? Why don't you just say that, that you're anti-survivor? Asshole. If major news outlets pick up a big allegation but then don't follow the false whatever, you're such an asshole, man. Juicy stories equal crazy profit for news outlets. They wouldn't let YouTube creators make all that money if an allegation were true. Can you just go away? After reading this long novel, what is my intention? He even says, after reading this long novel, what is my intention? I don't know what your intention is, but you have too much time on your feet. Okay? Got too much time on your goddamn feet. (laughs) So I don't care about your intention at this point. While I'm hoping you take a few minutes to consider your next actions, are you committed to continuing to press this Dan Schneider? Are you working for Dan Schneider? (laughs) Wait, is Dan Schneider paying you to write this email? Why are you so adamant about protecting Dan Schneider? Are you committed? Do you give a fuck? Who even gives a fuck if this person is committed to Dan Schneider or not? I don't. I don't got that much time on my feet. I don't even have that much time on my hands. I don't have that much time in my head, (laughs) to be honest with you, to even care if someone is digging around when it comes to Dan Schneider. Good. See if you can find more. Let someone find more shit when it comes to Dan Schneider. Why try to even stop it or hinder it? Let it go. Let it happen. See what comes up. See if more people come forward. Why do you care so much, Matt? Unless you're trying to be in the Zoe 102 reboot. Why do you care so much? Curious. Allegation along with every other allegation Sloan makes, even if they're found to be false, by association you publicly agree with everything Sloan says. Bro, you publicly agree with everything Dan Schneider does, which is more damning for you than it is for this fan. 
I'd rather agree more with Sloan when it came to the Dan Schneider video than to agree more with Dan Schneider himself, like personally. And by sharing some of their videos, you publicly condone all of their videos. That's just how the internet works. You're in the same boat with them as I am with you. Wow, he's really bullying her out of not investigating into Dan Schneider. Interesting. Interesting, Matt. So that's why it was so hard to get this stuff out. You, you were also working for Dan? By continuing to advertise Sloan, you commit to the allegations that have a very hard to reeling back to reality if they're false. Do you know without a single shred of doubt that Sloan's videos and allegations being made are true? Okay, I'm actually skipping over this because you have too much time on your feet. If you answer to continue, then maybe take some time to consider how you can more, more responsibly continue the crusade. <laughs> the crusade against Dan Schneider. There isn't even a crusade. Simply sharing Sloan's videos. Okay, you're really butthurt about people calling out your good old friend, Dan Schneider. What are you saying here? This is one of those crossroads in life that are pretty shitty to decide on. <laughs> this is really, it's like Ernest Hemingway at this point. It's the main reason I take my responses to allegations so seriously. If I personally can't prove it, I must find all the available evidence. Then why didn't you call me up? Matt, why didn't you call me up after I came forward about Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon in 2019, which is before... 2021 you didn't care about the allegations you didn't come up to me and ask me what I went through or wanted to hear more or cared get over yourself bro this email are you trying to date this girl because in my opinion this is kind of weird <laughs> Like, the fact that you're putting so much into this and sounding all, like, you know best and, like, guiding her. What, what's your dynamic with her? And what's this power dynamic, by the way? You on Zoe 101, you talking to a fan, writing a novel. This is kind of weird to me. What are your intentions here when it comes to this email? I find it very weird, and it feels very domineering. Very domineering, like you, you're you getting her out of her perception of something when you didn't even care to call your co-star, me, to ask what I went through and to give me a shout out or stand up for me once, once, once. You never sent me an email like this and that's why I actually kind of think there's something more going on here with this email with you. You either are being paid by Dan Schneider, in my opinion, allegedly this is kind of a joke here. I don't think Dan Schneider is paying anybody. But also, it might be possible that you're trying to date this fucking girl. You never cared to send an email like this to me or to any of your fucking co-stars. You never went up and beyond for anybody, Matt Prokop. But Pro <laughs> I can't say it without saying Matt Prokop. Matt Underwood. <laughs> They're literally the same person to me. Matt Underwood. All Matts are the same, like you said. If, if you use a name, you can get sued for just using one person's, what, first name? So you got, all of you Matts are the, same, are the same to me personally. Matt Prokop, Matt Underwood, the same person. Sorry. I'm honestly just upset that I'm reading this email, and I never got an email like this from any of you guys. I never got an email like this ever from any of you guys. But I guess if you're working for Dan, you got all the time on your feet <laughs> to write an email like this, or if you are maybe interested in this fan and trying to impress this fan that's a girl, by the way, then you got a whole lot of time on your feet once again. But you didn't have a lot of time on your feet to say sorry to me or to reach out to me, or to say you stood with me about something, or to ask if I was okay. No, you didn't have that time on your feet. And I can't believe I'm even saying those words right now. So let's go on to this little, um, let's go, what is this, a long distance, <laughs> I'm not even gonna, long distance uh, love going on here. This is one of those crossroads in life that are pretty shitty, yada, yada, yada. This email's pretty shitty. 
If I personally can't prove it, I must find all of the available evidence and reasonable, blah, blah, blah. And my last piece of advice, are you her father or are you, what are you? And my last piece of advice on this subject, if someone famous tells you they're okay with you continuing to spread an allegation, but they can't provi provide you with any additional info to account for its truthfulness, I would put my bets on them just wanting attention too. You seem to be wanting her attention, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm not going to throw a name out there, but I think I'm being pretty obvious with what you last said to me. If they aren't willing to publicly back you up, then they're just putting the burden on you without care for what happens to you if you're wrong. That is wrong to me. I unfollowed you because I can't back you up on this, but I didn't unfollow you and give you my approval. What? Don't let someone turn you into their test pilot because they're too afraid to make a fool of themselves on the subject if they're wrong. P.S. I'm so sorry for the novel. I have, I had too much time on my feet. No, I'm kidding. He didn't say that. Uh, if you got this far, you're my hero. I got this far. Am I your hero? <laughs> Am I your hero? Are we all collectively your heroes? <laughs> I think so. I I honestly think so. I can't believe I had to read this pathetic email, honestly. This was the most embarrassing email. If this is true, and this is really your email, th this is beyond embarrassing. I hope whatever you do makes you happy, smiley face. Okay, there's another one, by the way, with another 15 paragraphs. I'll do for another live which I can't even believe there's another email with another 15 paragraphs where he's defending Dan Schneider again and Nickelodeon, et cetera. I don't really know what his intentions were. What do you say? Thank you for this video. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for giving me something to talk about on Tuesday, November 14th. Thank you for taking me down memory lane. Memory Lane, when it, oh, 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 wait, I really want to play this really quickly on TikTok. You guys, I just found this, which is the weirdest, I don't remember this, but it's real, and I have a lot of questions. And Matt, pro cop Underwood, <laughs> if you're watching this, since you have a lot of feet on your hands, <laughs> a lot of time on your feet, a lot of feet on your hands, watch this, watch this. Call Mr. Callahan. Yeah. Yeah. That would be so great. I am not prank calling our English teacher. You rolled odds. You gotta face the stress. I don't have his phone number. Call Mr. Callahan. Yeah. Why the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. Why the fuck does Nicole have her English teacher's phone number? Girl just whipped it out. Me, that girl. <laughs> whipped it out as if it was no big deal. No one bat an eyelash. No one bat an eyelash like Matt. Underwood likes to say, no one bat an eyelash by the fact that Nicole had her English teacher's phone number on some random piece of paper. Where did she get it? Who gave her the phone number? Really shady. And that's just one of the many, one of the many creepy, beyond creepy. Wait, let me see how everyone's doing in the chat. How, how is everyone doing? Oh my God, the chat's going so fast, I can't even read it. How is everyone doing? I mean... You know, that's just one creepy thing that Dan Schneider did. And the Quinn thing. And there's videos that I want to play, but I almost don't want to play them, by the way. I don't want to play some of the videos that Dan Schneider had us do, other child stars do, because it's, I feel uncomfortable playing them myself. You know what I mean? Like, they're that inappropriate and that out of line and that creepy that I don't even feel comfortable playing it on my own channel. Because I don't want them to be seen like that again. I don't want even myself to really be seen like that. But I feel more comfortable at least showing me because it's really consensual that I can play myself. But he did this to so many child stars, Dan Schneider. It's like, watch Matt Underwood. There's countless, countless episodes, clips, etc. where Dan Schneider went too far. There's many tweets where Dan Schneider went too far. Right? Too many tweets, too many tweets, too many episodes, too many lines, et cetera. Read Jeanette McCurdy's book, listen to what I had to say about him with the wardrobe room, et cetera. What? I mean, 
how is everyone doing? Dan did really creepy stuff on Amanda Bynes' show. Yeah, I mean, I might even want to start digging into this more, to be honest with you, because the fact that Matt Underwood was so, I don't know, like the fact that he was so prepared and had that much time on his feet to write that email makes me also a little bit concerned because why does he why was he willing to write that email why right why was he able to kid chef's kiss oh and i'm gonna be oh wait i'm also i want to don't show my screen adam but i'm gonna pull up the the chat so i can tell people who got stuff from the raffle by the way for the giveaway and so we have kristen tench who got ep burn book Robotics, who got Rock and Blockum. Wait, is this right? Did I say this right? Yeah. Robotics got Rock and Blockum. Brobots, P. Flynn got the Stalkers. Who ended up getting this guy? Who ended up getting this guy? So then Christian got Less Than Half the Movement. Sweet Music Woman got Loves to Pray. Oh, so Sweet Music Woman, if you're still here, you got this one, actually. And then Mindy got NDA Men. And Annecy got Survivor Barbie. So please make sure that you email epredators at gmail.com so that we can send the signs out to you guys, which I'm super excited about. But I don't even see the history. But I hope that we we end up figuring out who got this one because this is one of my favorite ones. So I hope that we figure that out. But if you won an, on the giveaway, please email us. Let us know your P.O. box or a good shipping address so we can send it out to you. And uh, yeah, so, you know, what else do I d did I pull up anything else here? It's been a long day. This is the first day in the in the new studio and it was honestly a long one. But I guess, oh, God. I mean, and then here is, yeah. So I don't even want to show that, honestly. I don't even want to show these kids' feet. There's there's just so much of it. There, There is honestly so much of it. But, you know, Matt Underwood, I really wish that you had more time on your feet to reach out to me and, you know, ask me how I was doing, maybe apologize for a couple of things here. Or maybe if you were never going to reach out to me, I just wish that one cast member, one cast member publicly said, you know, I I hear Alexa and I support her. And, you know, even if you mean like a, uh, an asshole comment, like if it's true, you know, like I, I support her, just something, you know. But it's really sad to see that he had, I don't know, more time for that email than to talk to someone he actually knew who has been hurt and exploited on the set of Nickelodeon, who has been exploited as a child by Dan Schneider, really tells me where Matt Underwood stands. And it, it tells me at least what kind of person he is and, and what side of history he's personally on. And you know, that's that. And you can't change people and I'm not sitting here trying to change people, but I do want people to understand that, you know, this is what survivors go through. This is just another example of like someone like Ashton Kutcher who's sending a letter to somebody trying to make someone, you know, their friend look more credible and not in, you know, not guilty, yada, yada, yada. It happens all the time. And here's Matt Underwood doing it himself. And it's pretty shameful and wait, Marissa, oh my God, I did win one. This feels like Christmas morning. Congratulations, Marissa. Congratulations, everyone. And yeah, I guess that's another episode of E Predators Daily. But let me see if I missed anything up here in the chat to just any super chat. Marissa, I see you. Let me see if I'm missing any. Oh, well, let me go any further. If I missed anything, I'll make sure to look at it later on and uh, do a shout out on Thursday. So you guys, this is kind of like a, a back to the future, future to the back. I don't know. I got, I got, I guess time on my feet <laughs> this week to, to take a trip backwards. But unfortunately I, I got word about something that I found to be extremely hurtful on the Ned's declassified podcast 
I reached out personally to Christy and trying to get an apology privately for a few months and I didn't get it. No one wanted to apologize to me per usual, whatever, you know, it is what it is. But as I'm getting older, I'm just like done being a pushover. You know, I, I, I'm done being used on their shows as someone as clickbait, you know, et cetera. And I don't get to express my opinions when I'm hurt or they say something about me that I find to be offensive or problematic or adds more stigma around mental health, et cetera. You know, I'm just at the place in my life where I'm going to discuss things publicly when they come up. And that's just who I am now. And so on Thursday, I'm going to be going through the Nesdy Classified podcast episode about me that I found extremely offensive and also the Chrissy Romano situation with Corey Feldman where she left a survivor on red. She pretty much le left me on red when it came to that and continued to allow the clickbait about him to, in my opinion, make more money off of him instead of listening to the survivor's friend who I won't go into it today. But we'll go into it on Thursday. And I think it's just important to talk about because that's just me now. Maybe I am a what you, a dramatic diva. <laughs> well, welcome to my dramatic diva era. And um, I'm honestly happy to be here. So they might not be happy about it. And I honestly don't care anymore. So thank you guys for being here. And I will see you Thursday. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thanks for bearing with us. See you Thursday. <laughs>